Ken PC is in the house. Thanks for jumping in this morning there, Ken. Hopefully you're having a good start of the new year in 2020. You are the first in the chat. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, probably let my intro video run for about a a minute or less, as soon as it hits 10, 12, I'll, I'll turn that up. Thumbs up done. Thank you, Aaron Kensky. Hello, Donald. Happy New Year to you and your family. Blessing for a great 2020. Thank you very much there, Aaron. Appreciate you being in here today. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Seeing different uh, YouTube updates on my phone. As we get ready to start our history lesson for today. All right. As soon as my uh, as soon as my computer goes to ten twelve, I'll turn the camera around and chit chat with you guys for a little while until we start our content precisely at ten thirty. All right. Thanks for those that are jumping in today. I know my daughter was even saying, "You're gonna do a." your YouTube today on a holiday I'm like why not if people show up they show up if not that's fine too at least I get my content up and keep my schedule going so I'm gonna let this cycle through one more time and then I will turn the camera around and chit chat with you guys all right okay let me uh Turn the camera around real quick. Without trying to drop the phone on the, out of the tripod. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are all doing good today. Uh, you'll probably hear a little frog in my voice. Looks like I'm getting, it's, it's pretty fun. I didn't go, I went through all of 2019 without a cold. And right at the very end of 2019, I started to get a little a little frog in my throat, trying to stave it off, see if I can do that. So I'm not going to do a real long uh, live stream, just going to go over our content at hand. So I will do that for us today. Kevin's card collecting is in the house. Hey Kevin, thanks and good morning. Hopefully you guys seen my... Uh, first video installment for reading God's Word through in 2020. Hopefully my my voice holds up so I can get more uh, episodes recorded up. But um, I do appreciate all the support that everybody gives me in the channel. Um, who do I think is going to be a good team this year? Um... I'm going to hold my comments for now until I start seeing a little bit of spring training and see what the 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 teams are going to be looking like. So um, until we get closer to that, um, we'll see how things roll. How's that sound? I don't want to make any early predictions, but um, just wanted to at least uh, get things rolling with the start of the new year. And see how things roll along here. Get my updates going here. Let's see, I'll resume that after the live stream here. I do run on a couple of my devices. Different. Uh, I love listening to you for reading the Bible. I enjoy that. Thanks there, Aaron. Appreciate that. I do really appreciate that. So, yeah. So we'll get into the content at hand precisely at 1030. That'll be in 15 minutes. But I kind of use this uh, open forum here that we can um, chit chat in the channel. Just say hi to each other and wish everybody, of course, a happy new year. Um, Ken PC was the first in the chat today. So I'll give a shout out to Ken PC. I like his channel. He's a, he's a Filipino up to the north of us in Canada. And I do like his content he creates on his channel. It is also, uh, a lot of his content is Christian based also. 
that kind of gives us a little connection with me and Kevin and Ken PC. So I'd just like to give a shout out for uh, for him on that. So um, yes, so we will get into our history uh, lesson at hand. Um, you can see that our four uh, Hall of Famers for 1985 that we're going to go over is Lou Brock, Eno Slaughter, Archie Vaughn, and Hoyt Wilhelm. Will be our four Hall of Famers for 1985 as we continue back in time for the Hall of Famers. All right. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying this series. Eventually, it will come to an end. And then probably it might uh, pretty much be combined with uh, highlighting then uh, all the Hall of Famers uh, one by one in alphabetical order, which it'll kind of overlap itself until this series does finish out. But uh, other than that, I can't really think of anything in general to speak about. Maybe I jumped on too early. Or maybe we'll just uh, jump into our history lesson a few minutes early. We'll see how the morning goes and see how my voice holds out. I do have water to, uh, to wet the whistle. To kind of smooth out. Uh-oh. It looks like I just made a sale on eBay. That's nice when you're online live on your YouTube channel and you make a sale on eBay. I'll have to check that out in a little bit here. Actually, I could do that while we're um, online here. Let's see, go into my selling on my eBay. Um, hmm. That's interesting, it doesn't show a sale. Let me do a refresh. Oh. Maybe somebody gave me a super chat. <laughs> that is awesome too. That would be my first super chat of the year. You say super chat. No, I'm not monetized yet. But at least... Um, yeah, I don't see any... Um, let me see. Let me go into... Yep, it must... Something came in through uh, PayPal, so it must be a uh, a super chat. Appreciate that, whoever gave me a super chat. I really do appreciate that. Um, sometimes, usually, when I get my eBay or my my PayPal alerts, it shows that uh, I either made a sale or. Yeah, I almost forgot that I do have my, uh, in case you guys are wondering, let me go to my channel real quick. I'll turn my camera around and show where you can go and give me a super chat. Um, let's see, the back camera, there we go. So, um, just for those that are wondering what I was talking about that, I don't have a dollar sign per se because I'm not monetized yet. But I do have a, uh, you can buy me a coffee. If I highlight that, you can see this down here. It says, you can buy me a coffee. Let me zoom in a little bit closer here on that. You can see that. If you highlight, you can see the little PayPal link there. And it says, you can buy me a cup of coffee. That's my version of a, uh, a PayPal super chat. So it says, you can buy me a coffee. And then, of course, I got my a link for my Patreon page. Um, if you've waited till today, you won't be charged till February 1st. So you could sign up for Patreon and not pay until February 1st. Uh, Patreon processes the payments on the first of the month, just so you do know there. And then, of course, this here is a, a link to my eBay Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Card page. I want to give a shout out to uh, Brian McClemens. Brian McClemens. Uh, I do have a fan mail package from him on Saturday. It might be a Christmas card with something inside of it. 
but um, he did make a purchase from me on eBay, and I do appreciate that. In case Brian is around on the channel today, I do appreciate that. And then, of course, Hoopla Dupla is in here. But this is my uh, my homepage. Again, if you want to know what's going on on my channel, all you have to do is click on my About Me tab here. We can talk about this stuff before I get into my content at hand. And if you click on the About Me ta tab, it gives a description on what's going on on my channel. Of course, my, my big grand finale giveaway with 4,000 watch hours surprise to be announced when reached. Okay, so that will be announced when it is reached, which we are getting closer. I'll give you an update on that in just a minute. So um, starting mid-December, I changed my schedule for um, Sundays would be to be announced, possibly live streaming on StreamYard. That's when I do have extra time on a Sunday afternoon if we're not doing anything as a family. And then, of course, Mondays is my Baseball Team's History video series. Tuesday is my Baseball Cards History video series. Wednesdays, of course, now is my Hall of Fame inductee video series, which today we are on 1985. And then uh, Thursdays will be a blaze, blah, 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 Baseball Player Biography video series. Um... Oh, okay, it is an eBay sale. Okay, now it shows I have did get the payment. So it wasn't a super chat, but that's fine. I made a sale on eBay now. Um, and then Friday will always be my family mail call Fridays. When there is no family mail call Fridays, we will do a baseball card box opening. Um, I don't have much for boxes right now, but I do have some odds and ends stuff. And I do have two... Um, Fairfield boxes back in reserves in case I do need something else for a fan mail Friday. And then on, on Saturdays, starting this year, so this Saturday, we will start doing my live streaming Hall of Fame Players Baseball Card Review. And probably along with that, when I get into the single players on the cards, I will probably tie their biography in with the the baseball card review for that uh, baseball player. So that is my uh, Monday through Saturday video schedule. My live streams will always be at 1030. And then from 1030 till uh, we will have open chat time on the channel. So that's what I will do. Open chatting till 1030 when we do our content, which we are seven minutes away. And then for those that do want to know the address for any fan mail call packages you want to send. So, uh, or not fan, family mail call packages. I need to edit that and say family mail call Friday packages can be sent to, and there's the at my business address, Donald Blondahl, Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Cards, 14125 Smoky Point Boulevard, Marysville, Washington, 98271. I do have my email address here. You can email me any questions. And that is my Instagram. In case you would want to send me something via Instagram. Or uh, send me a picture of a card. Or uh, request. Anything you want in regards to that. So other than that. And then on the bottom here I do have my links. That I have on my homepage. You can buy me a coffee, Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Patreon, eBay Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Cards, and Hoopla Dupla Shopping Page. Okay? So let's see. Let me now go into my preview chat part where I go into my YouTube studio. So then you can see um, this is where you go into your studio to do and check on things if you want to upload a video. Um, if you want to go live, um, create a post, okay? So, and then you do have your different tabs on the left-hand side here. Let me go over these real quick with you. You have your overall dashboard, which is what comes up when you first go into your studio. You can review your videos, your playlists, your analytics. This gives you your overall analytics on your channel. And this is kind of handy because you can go up over here. Let's see. i got to kind of adjust this. You can go up here, up on the top just a little bit. If I can tip this. You can adjust this from the last month. 
to 90 days, but I always jump in here, check my last 365 days. Um, if you highlight this one here, it will give you your overall hours. Chose right now 3,612.8, which isn't fully been verified by YouTube yet. But when you go in, you can go into your comments, which I probably have a few to catch up on here. Yep. So I will do that later after the live stream. I will catch up on my comments. This is where you can put, uh, and I encourage you to do this, add subtitles and things onto your YouTube content. But then this is your monetization. It gives you what has been verified to date. So this is what has been verified to date. So I do have just over probably 1,070 subscribers. Yesterday this said 1,080. So I probably lost a couple subscribers. That's fine. As long as I eventually get new subscribers, I can keep above my 1,000 subscriber mark, which I have a margin of error, error there of 70 subscribers. But kind of like um, Kevin's card collecting and more said, you kind of get to a stale stalemate process where you're not getting many new subscribers. But uh, partially, an individual would be uh, to blame for part of that when you're not going out trying to actively um, build your subscribership level to then have them come back and visit your channel and give you a subscription also. But we can talk about that on another occasion or a StreamYard stream. But certified so far, I do have 3,566 which means I need 434 hours um, to get monetized. Um, are you doing going to do different Hall of Fame people? Are you going through the years? Um, yeah, on my Hall of, Hall of Fame like I'm doing today, and I, we will start in three minutes. I started in 2019 with 2019, and I'm going back in time. In the Hall of Fame inductee series. Today we are doing the 1985 Hall of Fame inductees. But on my Saturday stream, I will be starting alphabetically. Um, I'm going to go through a, just a, a mini intro on this Saturday where I go into what I call my double, triple, and quad Hall of Famers. Um, those are where there's either two or three or four or more Hall of Famers on the same baseball card. So I'm going to highlight some of those that I have in my collection. But yeah, that's pretty much... It'll be pretty much these three boxes here, which is all of my Hall of Fame cards. Of which I do have uh, about 3,000 i got to get sorted in here. And another one here. I, gotta, I could eventually have up to four boxes here. I'm just running out of space. So other than that, we got about two minutes before I do get into our history lesson for today. So without further ado, I'm going to get things ready <clears throat> to, to go into our content here. We've probably got a little over a minute. Yep, just clicked over a minute to go. So let me get the camera um, lined up here to go over our Hall of Famers. You'll see them right on the bottom here. These are our four Hall of Famers that I'm going to do today and highlight. As I do each one, I bring it front and foremost. So as I do each of the four, and then we'll go over their Hall of Fame induction um, statistics and things of that nature. All right. So let me get this all ready to go. Lined up so I have all my information at hand. So we only have a few people in. I didn't expect a whole lot of people today, this being a holiday. But as soon as it says 10.30, we will get to the content at hand and go through these four inductees, Lou Brock, Eno Slaughter, Archie Vaughn, and Hoyt Wilhelm. These, of course, are from two different Cooperstown uh, collections that have been produced in years past. Um, this one here is from... Uh, trying to remember the year on this dun, 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 dun. this is a 2012 panini product and this i'm sure is the 2013 they did these two years 
Yeah, and then this one is 2013. I do have two complete sets of these Panini products. And these are just some of my extras that are in my Hall of Fame set. So without further ado, we are going to start off with Lou Brock here. Lou Brock is going to get highlighted first. I'll show you that. The front of this card shows Lou Brock. And then the back, um, uh, Lewis Clark Brock. It's card number 142 in the Panini 2012 product. We will get into Lou Brock's information for his induction into the Hall of Fame. So without further ado, Lewis Clark Brock inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1985. His primary team was the St. Louis Cardinals, and he was a left fielder. He was baseball's most dangerous for more than a decade, pressuring opponents with speed and daring on the base paths. <clears throat> um, Lou Brock was much more than a stolen base specialist and by the end of his particular 19-year big league career Brock was recognized as one of baseball's most complete and clutch players of the 20th century uh, Born June 18, 1939 um, in El Dorado, Arkansas Lewis Clark Brock played college baseball at Southern University before signing as an amateur free agent with the Cubs in 1960. After two years tearing up the minor leagues, Brock surfaced in Chicago at the tail end of the 1961 season, becoming the Cubs' regular center fielder in 1962. The following year, the 24-year-old Brock played 148 games as Chicago's right fielder, scoring 79 runs while stealing 24 bases and hitting 258. But on July 5th, 1964, the Cubs, des desperate for pitching, dealt Brock to the Cardinals as part of a trade for Ernie Bro Brogolia, Broglia, an 18-game winner in 1963. I guess that fewer than 2% of the people in baseball thought it was a good trade for us, said Cardinals third baseman Ken Boyer. Brock proved the doubters wrong, hitting 348 with 81 runs scored and 33 stolen bases in just 103 games for St. Louis while leading the Cardinals to the National League pennant. In the World Series, the Cardinals' new left fielder hit 300 with five RBIs to help St. Louis beat the Yankees in seven games. The next year, Brock began a stretch of 12 seasons where he averaged 65 steals and 99 runs scored a year. He led the Cardinals to back-to-back -back National League pennants in 1967 and 1968 and the World Series title in 1967 hitting 439 in the two fall classics, which included a record 13 hits in the 1968 World Series and 12 the year before. In 1974, the 35-year-old Brock mounted a successful challenge to Mari Wills' 12-year-old stolen base record, amassing 118 steals while finishing second in the National League Most Valuable Player voting. Brock surpassed Ty Cobb's all-time stolen base mark of 892 during the 1977 season. He led the National League in steals every year but one between 1966 and 1974. He finished his career in 1979 with an all-star game appearance that year, his sixth, while hitting 304. He totaled 3,023 hits. 1,610 runs, 900 RBIs, and 938 steals. A stolen base mark that stood until 1991. Brock was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1985 in his first year of eligibility, becoming just the 20th player elected in his first year on the ballot. The numbers can hardly tell the full story of Lewis Clark Brock, they cannot tell you of the enthusiasm he possessed, 
the zest for the game, the excitement he generated, the joy of watching him. If you have not seen him play, you have missed one of the great joys of sport. This was said by the uh, New York Daily News reporter Phil Pepe in 1979. So for his career stats, his career at a glance, he played in 2,616 games. He had a total of 10,332 hits, 1,610 runs, 3,023 hits, um, 486 doubles, 141 triples, 149 home runs, 900 runs batted in, 938 stolen bases, 761 walks. He had a batting average of 293, an OPS of 753, an on-base percentage of 343, and a slugging percentage of 410. So there you go, and there you have it. Those are Lou Brock's stats for his induction into the Hall of Fame. So next up to bat here for our second inductee is Eno Slaughter. Eno Slaughter is our second inductee into the Hall of Fame. All right. So Enos Bradshaw Slaughter, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1985. His primary team was the St. Louis Cardinals, and his primary position was right fielder for the Cardinals. All right. So to be a big league ball player, you have to love the game. Enos Slaughter said, This is a pretty good game and a pretty swell way to make a living. The conditions in the majors are fine and the money is good. So I say keep yelling and hustling every minute you're in uniform. Slaughter grew up in Roxborough, North Carolina, where he earned the nickname Country. Though he was a southern gentleman off the field, he was a fierce competitor between the lines and his intensity was often mistaken for brashness and cockiness. Slaughter began his career with the St. Louis Cardinals in 1938 as a 22-year-old. He spent 13 seasons with the Cardinals and was a 10-time All-Star. Like many players from his era, Slaughter's career statistics would be better if he hadn't missed three prime seasons from 1943 to 1945 to serve during World War II. During the war, Slaughter was a sergeant in the Army Air Corps. I wanted to be a pilot, he told author Frederick Turner, but they said I was colorblind. They wanted me to be a bombardier, but I said if I couldn't be the one flying the plane, I just, I'd just as soon not be flying. So I became a physical education instructor in charge of about 200 troops. Slaughter didn't skip a beat upon returning to baseball, leading the National League with 130 RBIs in 1946 and guiding the Cardinals to a World Series win over the Boston Red Sox. Aside from his intense, sometimes violent playing style, Slaughter is best known for his mad dash in that World Series. In the bottom of the eighth inning of Game 7, the score was tied at 3-3. Slaughter was on first base with two outs when Cardinals manager Eddie Dyer called for a hit and run. Outfielder Harry Walker lined a ball to center field and Slaughter took everyone, including the Red Sox defenders, by surprise when he ran through a stop sign at third base. A rushed throw by home throw home by Red Sox shortstop Johnny Pesky allowed Slaughter to score what proved to be the winning run. A statue commemorating Slaughter's mad dash slide is outside Bush Stadium. <clears throat> On the ball field he is perpetual motion itself. He would run through a brick wall if necessary to make a catch or to slide into a pit of ground glass to score a run, said Arthur Daly of the New York Times. His career stats while in Major League Baseball with his three-year stint in the military during World War II, um, he played in 2,380 games, had 7,946 at-bats, 1,247 runs, 
2,383 hits, 413 doubles, 148 triples, 169 home runs, 1,304 RBIs, 71 stolen bases, and 1,018 walks. He had a batting average of 300, an OPS of .834, an on-base percentage of 382, and a slugging percentage of 453. So there we have it, Enos Radcher Slaughter, our second inductee into the 1985 Hall of Fame. So our third Hall of Fame inductee is Archie Vaughn. Archie Vaughn is next up to bat for our third inductee for 1985. Archie Vaughn. His full name is Joseph Floyd Vaughn, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1985. His primary team was the Pittsburgh Pirates, shout out to Eric Jabs. And his primary position is shortstop for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Archie Vaughn was the premier sh shortstop of his era and one of the best in baseball history. He hit 300 or better in each of his first 10 major league seasons all with the Pittsburgh Pirates and led the National League in runs and triples three years apiece, as well as triples once. Vaughn was born in Arkansas, and although his family moved to Fullerton, California when he was an infant, he was nicknamed Arky when he was a child because he spoke with an Arkansas accent picked up from his family. He was no a noted high school athlete who received interest from colleges for his football talent, but he signed a baseball contract with the minor league Wichita Av Aviators in 1931. He hit 338 in his only season in the minors, then joined the Pirates in 1932 at the age of 20. Vaughn rose to stardom quickly and played in his first nine straight All-Star games in 1934. He hit 364 in his career in Midsummer Classics, highlighted by a two homer, four RBI game in 1941. That performance was overshadowed by Ted Williams' game winning home run in the ninth inning, however. Vaughn's best season was 1935, when he led the National League in batting, slugging, and on base percentage. His 385 average that year was the highest in the 20th century for a National League shortstop. Vaughn was traded to the Brooklyn Dodgers late in 1941. And though he led the National League in runs and stolen bases in 1943, he was never a great player as he, as he was in Pittsburgh. He clashed with fiery man manager Leo DeRocher in 1943 and sat out the next three years. He said the absence was so he could devote his time to his California farm in support of the war effort. After DeRocher's suspension from baseball for the 1947 season, Vaughn returned to the Dodgers and hit 325 in 64 games. As a 35-year-old, he retired from the majors for good after the 1949 season. Vaughn died tragically in 1952 at the age of 40 when a sudden storm capsized his fishing boat on a lake near his California home. Vaughn tried to save his companion, who could not swim, and they both drowned. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee in 1985. Fellow Arkansas Arkansan and Hall of Famer Travis Jackson played against Vaughn and later described him as a quiet and solid sort of guy. He never raised any fuss. He just played ball hard all the time. A 300 hitter, year in and year out, and he could run and field with the best of them, said Buddy Hassett. So here's his career at a glance. He played in 1,817 games. He had 6,622 at-bats with 1,173 runs, 2,103 hits, um, 356 doubles, um, 128 triples, 
96 home runs, uh, 926 RBIs, 118 stolen bases, 937 walks. He had a batting average of 318, an OPS of 859, and a slugging percentage of 453. So there we have it, our third inductee for the 1985 Hall of Fame inductees, Archie Vaughn. All right, last but not least, our fourth inductee for 1985, Hoyt Wilhelm. Hoyt Wilhelm is our fourth and final inductee for 1985. So Hoyt Wilhelm, James Hoyt Wilhelm, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1985. His primary team was the Chicago White Sox, and his primary pos position is pitcher. I'm spinning, but it's probably me. Yeah, most likely, I think. Everything seems fine on my end here. I'm getting about, uh, on average, 28 to 30 frames a second. So um, what you can do, Paul, is just jump out and reset and then come back in again, and hopefully it should clear up. All right. So without further ado, let's get into his. Again, he was with the Chicago White Sox, and his primary position is a pitcher. I got to messing with the knuckleball in high school, Hoyt Wilhelm said. I started to see that the ball was doing something. I figured it was my only ticket to the big leagues because I couldn't throw hard. I knew if I was going to play ball, I'd have to make it some other way. There was nothing un nothing usual about Hoyt Wilhelm's path to the Hall of Fame. For one, he spent most of his big league career coming out of the bullpen, becoming the first reliever ever enshrined. For another, he didn't make his major league debut until he was 29 years old and he pitched until he was nearly 50. Finally, he didn't blaze his way to Cooperstown with overpowering fastballs or knee-bending curveballs, instead relying most exclusively on his darting, unpredictable knuckleball. Wilhelm's big leg career nearly ended before it began. While serving in the Army during World War II, shrapnel from a German artil uh, artillery blast struck Wilhelm in the back and right hand. He received the Purple Heart for his actions, but he would pitch his entire career with that piece of metal still lodged in his back. Wilhelm spent seven seasons in the minors before getting to the majors with the New York Giants in 1952. He'd been a starter throughout his minor league career, but Giants manager Leo DeRocher moved him to the bullpen. All Wilhelm did was lead the National League in ERA and appearances as a rookie. A few years later, Orioles manager Paul Richards gave Wilhelm the chance to be a starter again after he came over from the Indians in August of 1958. Well, I was about a month old then. In just his third start for Baltimore, Wilhelm threw a no-hitter against the Yankees on September 20th, striking out eight. He remained in the Orioles rotation in 1959 and won the American League's ERA title, though he moved back to the bullpen again the following season. Hold on just a second here. <clears throat> Had to... Uh, Moisten my vocal cords. All right. Richards helped make this success possible by devising a larger catcher's mitt and was 41 inches in circumference, later reduced by 38 by roll for Wilhelm's receivers to use. Cutting down the past balls that plagued him and so many other knuckleballers. Wilhelm settled as a premier relief pitcher in an era dominated by pitching. He posted ERAs under 2.0 in five consecutive seasons from 1964 to 1968 with the White Sox. 
doing all of it after his 40th birthday. While some marveled at Wilhelm's longevity, he was the majors' oldest player from 1966 through the end of his career in 1972. He himself was quite pragmatic about it. He took care of himself, and he recognized that the knuckleball wasn't as taxing on his arm as conventional pitches would be. Wilhelm also believed that the knuckleball wasn't a pitch that could be taught. A pitcher either had a knack for it or he didn't. Wilhelm certainly did, perhaps better than anyone ever has. He had the best knuckleball you'd ever want to see, said Brooks Robinson. He knew where it was going when he threw it. But when he got two strikes on you, he'd break out one that even he didn't know where it was going. <coughs> Excuse me. If I had to pick myself one guy that I wouldn't want to hit against when he was right, it would be Hoyt Wilhelm. It was a battle just to get the bat on that knuckle bar ball. You know good and well how is a man going to hit a ball that the catcher can't even catch, said Billy Goodman. So for his career stats and career at a glance, he played in one he pitched in one thousand seventy games, he gave up one thousand five hundred and fifty seven hits, um seven hundred and seventy three runs, he pitched in two thousand two hundred and fifty four point one innings. He had 143 wins, 122 losses, giving him a winning percentage of .540. He started in 52 games. He had an ERA of 2.52. He had 20 completed game, games. Sorry. He had five shutouts. He had a whip of 1.125, 227 saves. 632 earned runs, 500 or 778 walks, and 1,610 strikeouts. So there we have it, our fourth and final Hall of Famer, Hoyt Wilhelm. Put him back in his place of honor there for our four Hall of Famers. All right, so let me go back. To the main screen here so there we have it folks our four hall of famers for today's video lou brock eno slaughter archie vaughn and hoyt wilhelm are our four hall of famers for oh troy's cards cars and comics just received a 1968 hoyt for my set from DA Card World, WITG7, SCCA. Happy New Year, Troy, says Kevin, Col card collecting and more. So we only have four people in the stream. I did not really expect many people at all today. So anybody showing up is really good. Nikki Vitz, Happy New Year to you, sir. Or, ma'am, sometimes Nikki... Probably, probably a guy. I don't know. Sometimes you never do know. I will be trying to check out the few people that did show up today. If I don't have you on my subscription already, I will have you. I'm pretty sure I got Troy's cards, cards, and comics. Of course, Kevin's card collecting and more. I do have um, um, Nikki, Nikki Vitz. <clears throat> Let me get into. Um, I don't know if my chat is still working or not. Let me move back here. Get into my live stream here. Turn that off. There we go. Just barely on. <clears throat> Let me see if the chat... There's. Here comes the chat. Okay. Maybe it isn't locked up. It just wouldn't let me... It won't let me scroll back, so think I can do it. Yeah, I can do it on my computer. Okay. Um, so uh, Nikki Vitz was here. Uh, Paul Deitch was here. Says he's spinning, but that's right. That was earlier. So I know there's not too many people in here. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to close things up. I'm hoping to go through my Diamondback Autos today. 
<coughs> Troy is an awesome guy. Jump on his bus if you can. Yeah, uh, I'm almost, I'm probably about 98% sure I am on uh, Troy's Cards and Comics. Let me double check here real quick. Um, yes, I am subscribed to him. I like that baseball bat. Big Stick Ken Griffey Jr. So Troy's Cards, Cars, and Comics. Looks like he's a Griffey collector like me. I have a... I have his number retirement bat. It's close to your bat. And I do have an autographed Ken Griffey Jr. baseball graded by PSA. <clears throat> so that is really cool there. I like that Troy's... Here, let me go into his so you can see I am subscribed to you. <clears throat> there we go. Troy's Cars, Cards, and Comics, and more. I do like that there. That is awesome. Let me uh, click back out of there. Uh, let me double check with um, Nikki Vitz. Nikki Vitz here. Let me go into that channel might be somebody new no I'm subscribed to Nikki Vitz I'm subscribed to Nikki Vitz yes I am all right looks like he's primarily a hop oh, probably all sports it looks like let me go into his videos here I see a hockey video there yeah it looks like he does a mix of everything he is all inclusive he's got MLB the show he's got basketball he's got hockey I don't know, does he do football too? Probably. No, nope, maybe not football as much. Looks like baseball. But yeah, I do have Nikki Vitz, so I am on board there too. I know Kevin's card collecting, for sure. Uh, Paul. I don't think Paul creates content, do you, Paul? Nope. But he is a faithful subscriber, that is sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on Paul. Try and get him to get into making videos soon. Um, uh, Chad Hopkins, I got him started in it. He he thought he never would do some videos. He broke out of his shell and started to. Maybe we can work work on Paul. But if not, he I know he faithfully subscribes to me. He's been helping me out with my watch hours. I do appreciate that, Paul. Um, let's see, um, Aaron Kinski. I'm pretty sure I've got Aaron Kinski. I know he's been on my stream on numerous occasions. Yes, I am subscribed to Aaron. Um, it looks like he has one upload. So he has created a video and I have watched it. So I haven't got any posts that he's created anything new yet. But Aaron Kinski is in my repertoire. Um, let's see. I think I've got everybody that is on the channel here i know there's four or five people here um so i'm going to get ready to wrap things up here i know i only have 50 minutes for the live stream and it does help when you do do live streams it's just i want to try and save my voice i'm hoping if nothing is going on uh, my daughter is home today my my wife's working and she said they had a bunch of checkouts at the hotel so she not, might not get home too early this afternoon but I am uh, going to go ahead and wrap things up um, well it was an eBay purchase but nice nonetheless so yeah I do have two fan mail packages um, one is um, from uh, Ryan McClemens and another one is uh, trying to think I'm thinking this is a purchase from eBay I'm not 100% positive but I'm pretty sure Ryan Virez but um, I'm pretty sure it's a, a card I ordered uh, multiple cards actually I got a real good price on it if I'm if it's the one I'm thinking I'll open it up on Friday you'll see it it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's an Edgar Martinez and uh, Ken Griffey jr. dual card so that'll go in a separate separation for my uh, double Hall of Famers. All right. <clears throat> so I will go ahead and get ready to wrap things up here.
Oh, well, <laughs> sorry about that dual feeding here. Let me turn the camera around to me. And then uh, go ahead and exit out. You can see how that's what happens when you're, it just goes like a mirror effect. All right. Oops. I ended that. I wanted to go back into my YouTube stream. There we go. All right. Good thing I didn't end the wrong tab. I got to continue with, uh, with Marco Eats. I'm run. I'm helping Marco Eats. Me and him are getting, are battling right now. We're getting close to monetization. Um, he needs about, uh, 400 watch hours and so do I. So we're battling each other. We're watching each other's playlists and, and trying to get our watch hours up. So anybody out there, if you are willing and can do it, if you haven't watched any of my playlists, I would appreciate that. I would appreciate that so much. I will show you I'm wearing my Hall of Fame members. Of course, this is my Seattle Mariners. Um, I'm probably going to work on getting a new Hall of Fame uh, t-shirt. On the back of the Hall of Fame t-shirt, it shows all of the players in the Hall of Fame. So I'm looking at maybe going to the Hall of Fame uh, website and seeing if they have a new version. Um, that includes the, the 2019 Hall of Famers because the two, 2020 have not been chosen yet. So I'm going to go ahead and probably... I'm a silly numbers guy. I'm going to try and go to 55 minutes and 55 seconds. See how close I can end the stream to that. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a numbers person. Oh, I was just kidding. Sorry. I got some updates. And checking what's going on so hopefully you guys are having a great day there we got about two more minutes to go and I'm gonna end the live stream I do appreciate you guys uh, let's see let me put in a little goodbye note in the in the chat oops forgot a space in her close to my 55 seconds here or 55 so I want to get this in the chat before I end there we go everybody have a blessed and wonderful new year I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to wrap things up guys just so you do know all right so thank you very much for joining me in my stream for today and you guys have a wonderful and blessed new year Okay, getting close here.